Okay, so let's go ahead and create our first layer and just see how that interacts with our functions. I'll expand this a little bit. So what do we need to make a layer? Well, there is a convention to it. So I'm going to first make a new directory, just call it layer. I'll cd into layer. And we need to make a directory that correlates to the runtime. So in that case, I'm going to make a directory here called Node.js because it's a Node.js runtime. And within Node.js, we can add stuff. Okay, so here I'm going to do copy-r node modules and package anything that starts with package. And I'm going to copy node modules and anything that starts with package into the layer slash Node.js directory. You could also move it, but I'm just going to copy it. So there's a copy of that. I'm going to cd into layer. Okay, so I'm cd'd into the layer, which is kind of important because I'm going to run a zip here. So I'm going to do zip-r 9q. And we're going to call this layer.zip. The name of the uh, zip file doesn't matter, but I'm going to do everything in this directory. So what is going to get zipped up is the Node.js directory. So when this unzips on AWS's side, when they are getting the layer in place, it's going to unzip the layer. It's going to see a directory named Node.js. So it's going to know that the runtime is related to Node.js and it'll handle it correctly. So you need a directory for each uh, runtime here. So Node.js, Go, Python, all that good stuff. These can be version specific as well, or just generic. So Node.js Go or Node.js 14.x or Go 1.x, all that good stuff. And the same for Python, etc. So we're going to zip up this, call it layer.zip. So we have a layer.zip file, and then we can create a layer. So the command for that is publish layer version, right? So there's no create layer, you're just publishing a layer version. And note that layers are in fact versioned, so you can have multiple versions of them. And when you add layers to a function, you can actually add multiple layers if you want. So this can let you mix and match certain runtimes and, and abilities and code and all that good stuff into your function as needed. So publish layer version. We're going to name this layer foo node.js modules. It can be named anything. We're going to add a description. And the file is going to be layer.zip that we just created here. And this has a compatible runtimes of Node.js 14x in our case. I just got specific with that. It could just be Node.js also, but I'll do 14.x since that's what our function is. Okay, so we have all this stuff in the results. Let's go ahead and scroll down because of what I want to see is, well, we have an ARN for the layer, but a layer version ARN. And this is actually version 3, and it's version 3 because, once again, I had the exact same layer exist in my account before recording these. So instead of version 1, we're up to version 3. So if I head over here, I'll refresh this. We'll see the same thing, right? Version 3 is the latest for this layer. So if we head back to functions and go to our Node.js function, we can see we can actually add layers here. But I'm going to go ahead and do it on the command line just to show you what it looks like to do there because interacting with AWS over the API is something I generally prefer over the UI. OK, so update function configuration. The function name is our Node.js. And the layers, remember, it's plural. You could do a list of layers here. I think they're, if you did that, it would be comma separated. But in our case, we have the ARN and the version, which is important here. So we're just going to add this one layer to our function. OK, that's done. In progress, function is being updated or created, they say. But OK, so if we refresh this page, we'll see we have our layer here, version 3 of our food Node.js modules layer. OK, now our function, our code, actually still has the node modules and everything in it, right? It's a 9.8 megabyte package. So let's actually change that. So back up out of the layers directory, we're going to remove, I'll just remove index.zip. So when we recreate it, I'll know for sure that it has the stuff in it. OK, so I'll do the same thing, zip uh, r9 index.zip, and it's just the index.js file, right? No node modules, no package lock, no package.json, just the index.js file. List that out. We'll see our index zip file here is very small. Great. So we can go ahead and update our Lambda function here, the Node.js function, with our new zip file. And that updated nice and quickly, right? So over here, let's refresh the page. Now look, our function is now again very small. And the Lambda layer is where all the bloat is. So let's go ahead and invoke that function one more time. Great, that worked. So I'll cat output.json. We got the output there. We did not get an error. So if I head back over here, and I'll check out our latest log stream, we'll see we have, once again, this call, right? This call was successful, which means the Node.js program was able to get the S3 um, API, um, which was code, a library that was inside of the Node modules directory, right? So if the layer did not work, if it didn't have Node modules in it, this function call would not have worked because Node.js would not be able to find the required module, that AWS SDK S3 client object. But it worked. So the Lambda layer was added 
our function itself is now very small. The layer has all the um, big chunks of code in it, right? our dependencies in this case. So that's one way that you can use layers to improve the speed to deployment of your Lambda functions by putting the, as much cruft as you can inside of a layer, making it so when you update your Lambda function, the code that runs it, that can be very lightweight. 